uh, of the Lord with you. Coming this week, the coming week, um, on the 25th is Wednesday, right? We're going to have a day of prayer and fasting. And then we'll pray that night on Wednesday night. Thursday night, the 26th, will be another day of prayer and fasting. Except on Thursday night, you will meet at the home groups or if you don't belong to a home cell, then you will gather with your family together at home and you will pray and you will break fast with communion. Amen. And then on Friday night, the whole church will get here together from just 7 to 8, one hour, Friday night. And we're going to break our fast here and have communion together. All right, are you excited about that? All right. I believe that God will richly bless us as we pray and we fast. Amen. And then, you can, shall I repeat that or you got a hold of what I just said? You got a hold of it? All right, so next Wednesday, 25th, day of prayer and fasting, we'll meet at the church. Thursday, day of prayer and fasting, you'll meet at your home cell or your home group. And the 27th, which is a Friday, we'll have a day of prayer and fasting, and we will meet here from 7 to 8, and we'll break fast here, all right? No, I'm sorry, you can break fast at home when you get home, but we'll have communion here. I don't want you to come to church and faint. You're going to be working, right? So that's fine. You can break fast at home. We'll just have communion here. And then on Saturday, the 28th, this is Saturday. Tell your neighbor, Saturday. You sure you got that? Saturday, the 28th. We are going to have a meeting here on Saturday between 5 and 7. 5 p.m. sharp. Everybody should be here by quarter to 5. More especially the leaders, workers, ushers, deacons. But it's open to anybody who wants to come. That's Saturday. After the praying and fasting for three days, we're going to have Pastor Dennis King with us. Amen. And he's going to come and he's going to speak to us about evangelism. And I think we ought to hear that. So Saturday evening, 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. for two hours, Pastor King will be here and he'll talk to us about evangelism. Then on Sunday morning, the 7 to 8 service, I'll take the 7 to 8 o'clock service. I know the people that come to the early service, you miss me, right? Amen. You love Pastor Zubeda, but you miss me. Amen. You, you shy to say so. All right, but I'll take the early morning service, and Pastor King will preach the main service. Um, I don't know if any one of you know Pastor King. Some of you do know him. He's been a friend of mine for a long time. Good man of God. He'll be here, him and his wife. And at half past eight in the morning, he'll preach and minister to us. And so get ready Sunday morning for a great service. Amen. All right. So you got all of that. Most importantly, the rest is normal. Most importantly is the Saturday service. Don't forget that, all right? Amen. All right, I want you to turn in your Bibles. Oh, I tell you what. The Lord is strong here, I'm Amen. telling you. Hallelujah. I want you to turn to Micah, chapter 4, verse 5. And there's many thoughts I want to share with you. We'll see how it goes, all right? Amen? I plan so many things, and it just doesn't go the way I plan it. The Holy Ghost takes over. Every time I say there's a short meeting, we end up a very long meeting. So when I say to Pastor Zubeda, we're going to have a short meeting, she says, don't tell me that. <laughs> all right. Now, I'm going to make some statements and you're going to grab a hold of it, right? God's Word in itself is a mystery. Did you get what I said? God's Word is a mystery. And it's very difficult for somebody to understand God's Word without the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And even when you have the anointing of the Holy Ghost, you have... Or you need something that is 
added to that, and that is called rhema, which is revelation, supernatural revelation. Are you with me? Now, it's very important to understand this, that confession of God's word without revelation equals frustration. Did you get that? I said confession of God's word without revelation in your spirit will equal frustration. Because you will be regurgitating and saying things, good Christian-like things, but it won't carry power and it won't have effect because it's void of revelation. So again, like I say, God's word is a mystery. And that is why you have the teaching and the preaching of God's word to give you instruction. Did you get that? Because God's word, when a man of God or a woman of God stands up and starts to teach you God's word and instructs you from God's word under the power of the Holy Spirit, under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, then that equals then revelation. Because mysteries become unfolded. Mysteries open up. In other words, whatever was clouded to you starts to get open to you. Are you with me? So with, with mysteries, when we are dealing with the mysteries of the Word of God, what we need is instruction by the Holy Ghost. In other words, instruction out of revelation that will come forth. And then your eyes are opened. Now, you have physical eyes. Amen? All of us have phys physical eyes. But besides physical eyes, you also have spiritual eyes. Because your spirit man can see. Oh, come on here. I don't have time to take you there, but the, you remember uh, Lazarus and the rich man. Where, you remember when he was taken to the bosom of Abraham, you found that he was a spirit man, but he could, he could relate to things. He, he could remember what happened. He, he could feel, you understand, the rich man, when he also came, uh, to that place. He started to speak. He said to uh, uh, Father Abraham, he said, uh, you remember Lazarus was in the bosom there. And he said to Father Abraham, he says, look, send Lazarus that he may dip his finger, they may quench my thirst. That means the man could feel. The man could remember because he said, send someone down to my brothers to speak. So your spirit man has all the same faculties that your body has. Are you with me? So your spirit man has eyes. Now when instruction comes out of the Word of God, listen carefully, when instruction comes out of the Word of God, what used to be mysteries before starts to be unfolded. Are you with me? For example, let me just give you an example. God is your provider. God is your nourisher. Like I was sharing on Sunday, God is what? God is Al Shaddai, the many-breasted one, the all-sufficient one, the one that will meet all of your needs. But now, that in itself is not enough for you to know that. You've got to have a revelation. Of the Word of God. In other words, God by His Spirit, while I'm preaching and while I'm teaching this thing, God by His Spirit must unlock that mystery for you. Amen. Come on here, church, because you, you're going to confess a lot, not get the result. And that will equal frustration. And then you're going to say the faith thing doesn't really work. But it does work, except that I've got to take you back and show you how it works. Are you with me? So that means when I speak about something like this, God is Al Shaddai. He's the all-sufficient one. He's the many-breasted one. He's the nourisher. He's there to take care of all of your needs and all of your provision. What you need is not just the Word. What you need is revelation that will illuminate the Word and that the eyes of your spirit will open just to that Word. Not to everything now. That's not important now. It's just that word. That thing that's being taught. 
that thing that's being preached. If God can open up my eyes for me to grab a hold of that, then I can walk in that light. So you cannot walk in a light, in the light of a revelation, except it be open to you. Are you with me? So it must be open to you. And that all together equals the wisdom of God. Hidden to the unsaved, hidden to the natural man, the man that's operating by suke, but opened up to the spiritual man. Come on here. In other words, to you, the born again man and the born again. Oh, come on here. In other words, you that are born again, don't operate. Listen carefully. Don't operate. If you're born again, don't operate by your five senses. Don't operate by your physical senses. Operate in the realm of the spirit. See, many times we say man is a tripod being. In other words, and we put it in order and we specify. We say body, mind, and soul. But really speaking, or body, body, soul, and spirit, really speaking, the correct order is to say man first before the fall. Man was first a spirit. Then a soul and body. But the natural man isn't like that. The natural man is body, soul. Uh, you, you understand what I'm saying? In that order, but a spiritual man and a spiritual woman is first a spiritual being. Come on here, talk to me. Or you've got to get a hold of this thing. Otherwise your life will be not functioning optimally, not functioning where God wants you to function. So you first of all a spirit man. And for a spirit man and a spirit woman, God has created spirit food. Amen. And that is the word of God. Do you remember that Je what Jesus spoke about, quoting from Deuteronomy? He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. Of course, he spoke that in Matthew chapter 4, but he tied that up with Deuteronomy. What he was saying was that, look. A spiritual man, a spiritual woman lives on the diet of the Word of God. Not on what you have been taught, not on human philosophy, not on tradition, not on psychology. Come on, talk to me. Not on human wisdom, but wisdom from above. Because the wisdom from below is an ordinary plane. But the wisdom from above is godly. The wisdom from above is spiritual. The wisdom from above will cause you to catapult yourself from any position you are in life. Are you with me? And so we have to make God's word number one. We have to make God's word our spiritual diet because it will not only cleanse us, but it will feed us. It will feed us and it will grow us. Sometimes you can grow huge just feeding on God's word. In other words, your spirit man has dominance in your life. In other words... I will just give you an example. I, just before I came to service, I was speaking to another pastor on the phone, and he made a statement to me, which was very negative. And uh, I heard myself speaking inside of me. Because what he said was not untrue. What he said was true, but now I felt that there was a spirit of fear trying to come through those words. And my spirit man, without me responding, said, No, I will not take that in. Are you with me? So that's where you need to go to. In other words, where your spirit man is so huge on the inside of you that the spirit man dominates anything and everything. Are you with me? Now you can grow yourself like that. Look, many times, and I, and I know I'm, I'm not hitting against that, but many times people say, well, you know, I'm sick, please pray for me. Huh? And so they expect you to come with oil and pray over them. And what are they really looking for? What, 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 what are they really looking for? Are they looking for just a visit, a casual chit-chat? Or they are, are they looking genuinely for healing? 
Or um, are they looking just for some kind of sympathy? Uh, I mean, we, we need to get down to this thing because the centurion came to Jesus. Listen carefully. The centurion came to Jesus and he said to Jesus, he says, look, I have somebody that's sick. He said, uh, Jesus said, okay, I'll come with you. What did he say? He says, no. Don't come with me. Just give the word. Now, it's fine. Somebody may have faith to lay hands and then administer healing. But, and that, there's nothing wrong with that. Please, don't get, me, you know, don't get cross with me now and shout me down. There's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But that's a low level of faith. Although it's scriptural. And although it's right, it's a low level of faith. See, you can grow yourself by God's word where you know God is with you. You know God. I mean, you have an audience with heaven. And then you can come to a point where, as the centurion said, not that you are the centurion. No, I want you to place yourself at the feet of the master. The centurion was making a demand. Because he said, Lord, you don't have to come. He says, I have servants under me. I say to this one, go, and that, and that one come, and they all obey me. He, he says, but watch this. He said, just give me the word only. Now, I don't want you to place your, your, yourself in the, in, the, in, the, in the shoes of the centurion. Uh, that is a person making a demand. I want you to place your, place your feet on the, on, on the shoes of the master who was standing and listening to this man. Think what, Je what was going through Jesus' mind. Well, we know what was going through his mind because he said something remarkable after that. He said, so great faith in Israel have I not seen. In other words, he commended the centurion. He told the centurion, wow, you have demonstrated great faith. Now watch what Jesus did. I told you, I want to place you in the shoes of Jesus. Now you're not going to get there overnight. You've got to grow yourself. Tell your neighbor, you have to grow yourself. So, so don't, go and, don't go and try this now. I, I mean, you've got to grow yourself and you need to get there. Now, Jesus now, um, he, he, he must have in his mind's eye worked out somebody needed deliverance. Someone needed healing. But where was the man? He was way back there. See where Earl is standing. He was way back there. Far away in a home lying on a bed. Now Jesus stood over here. And the only audience he had was the centurion. Do you see that? But now watch what he did. He says, go thy way. My servant is healed. Go thy way. What did Jesus actually do? Jesus took authority and controlled an environment he could not see with his eye, but could see with his spirit. In other words, way out there, not visible to the, the naked eye, he, he, he cast out that spirit of infirmity. He was not on the same geographical location. He was not on the same ground. But he could take authority over a spirit that was operating somewhere else. I hope you got what I just said. It's a higher plane. It's a higher plane. I'm not, I'm not down speaking the fact that you could meet somebody, lay hands on them, visit somebody. No problem, that's fine. I'm just saying there's a higher realm. It's a realm where we're not talking about the recipient. Huh? The recipient is the one that's receiving the miracle. And we're not talking about the one making a demand. 
Because if he stands proxy or she stands proxy, that is also kind of the recipient. I'm talking about the one that is dispensing divine power. I'm talking about the one that is dispensing God's grace. He's standing on another platform. He starts to realize devils and demons I can control. I don't have to be there. I don't have to be there. But I place myself in the shoes of the master where the centurion said, not necessarily, Lord, just give your word. Ah, it's great if you come and lay hands. It's great. We'll be privileged with your presence. But, Master, I perceive that there's something about you. If you say something, because, I mean, why take all that journey? You can control it from where you are. It's, it's a higher realm. It is, it is a, it's a higher platform. It is a higher consciousness. We talk about Christian consciousness. It's not a new thing. John G. Lake taught on that many years back. Christian consciousness. Christian consciousness is where your thoughts are so elevated that your thoughts become his thoughts. You remember that scripture in Isaiah quoting, it says, uh, you know, your ways are higher than my ways. And your... No, not, not for us who are born again now. No, no, not for us that are born again, because now that you are born again, recreated, and you have a, you have a, a, a new spirit inside of you, a born again spirit inside of you, now, you and God, because, I mean, look, God, now, we know this, and I'm not going to go through all the scriptures. You, you know this. We've talked about this before. God has now made residence in you. Amen. He's taken up residence in you. He's tabernacled in you. Amen. So that means your address or God's address is really you. I don't know if you know what I'm saying. In other words, when you are operating in life, you are God's address. If somebody wants to see God, look what Jesus said. Jesus said, um, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So if somebody sees you, they must know they've seen the Master. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Because you are his ambassador. Amen. You are his representation. Now, we, 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 we quote those scriptures. We say it. We quote it. We, 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 we use, we're familiar with it. But the issue is that it's really disjointed. So we say a little here and we say a little there. But I'm, I'm trying to join it for you. Amen. If God has tabernacled in you. That means if he's taken up residence in you as a Christian, and, and, and you are a Christian, you are born again, and God is residing in you, then every time you step, he steps. Every time you think, he thinks, provided that your thoughts are in line with God's word. Every time you speak, he speaks, provided your words are in constant and unison. Because two can't walk together except they be agreed. Now, when you have that type, of, that type of life, then you actually have an elevated Christian life. In other words, you walk. See, I was telling you earlier on, I felt the spirit of fear was coming through the statement that I heard. And immediately before I said anything, it was not even my mind, my spirit on the inside, rejected what came. I heard my spirit speak. It says, no, you will not entertain fear. Are you with me? 
Now your spirit man can grow to that, that level of where your spirit man starts to communicate, your spirit man starts to interact, your spirit man starts to engage. Actually, listen carefully, your spirit man can take over and control the affairs of life. Your spirit man can take over and control the affairs of life. Look, let me take you to a journey now, because you're looking at me like this. Matthew chapter 18, verse 18 and 19, you know, is a, is a, is a famous scripture. It says, if, um, if any two of you agree, let, let, let's turn there. Uh, I will just show you. Matthew chapter 18. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. I know you're very quiet. It means you're listening, right? Amen. Look in Matthew chapter 18. Verse number 18. It says, I assuredly, assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind, listen carefully, whatever you bind, hmm? Whatever you bind, if you're three meters away, whatever you bind on earth, no limitations, no geographical limitation. You could be praying for someone from here to Cape Town, from here in England. There's no, there's, no, there's no demarcations. There's no ge ge geographical lines. He says, As shortly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. He didn't say some things. He just said whatever. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. So you could be in a particular place and loose somebody out there. Come on. Are you getting what I'm saying? In other words, it's a higher dimension. And, and Jesus wants us to operate like that because he's got a task for us. And he, 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 he's got a job for us to do and he wants us to do it well. But now you need instruction out of the Word of God, so that instruction will give you what? Revelation. Turn to Matthew chapter 16. Let me give you another scripture there. Not that I've planned to do it, but something that just comes to mind. Um, let's see if I can find it. Matthew chapter 16. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Look at verse 4 of Matthew chapter 16. It says, A wicked and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. And he left them and departed. Look at verse 9 or verse 8. No, take, take, take verse 6. And Jesus said to them, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we have taken no bread. See, that's, that's what happens to most of us when, when God's word is being preached. You start to reason. And the moment you reason, you nullify God's word. Right there, in the arena of your mind, you nullify God's word. And then that prevents you to start walking on water because that's where God wants you to walk. Do you understand? So, so that's what I call a higher plane of living. It's not an ordinary plane. It's a higher plane of living. Watch this here. But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Oh, ye of little faith, why do you reason among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread, do you not yet understand or remember? See, now watch this now. 
Look at Jesus. He, you, you know there's a, a, a lot of great truth hidden in the statements of Jesus. Watch. He makes a remark. He says, O ye of what? Little faith. Why do you reason among yourselves? Because you brought no bread. And then now he, he, he adds to that in verse 9. He says, do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves? <laughs> in other words, he was saying, watch. He was saying, why are you reasoning? And then he takes them back immediately to a miracle that they were witnesses of. A witness is a person that has first-hand information. It is not hearsay, they saw. So he takes them back. He says, do you not know about that time? Watch. Are you with me now? He says, um, do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up? Know the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many large baskets? I like that. He didn't just say baskets. Because there might be people that say, well, these might, might have been mini baskets. You know, there are some people that reason the power out of the Scriptures. And it says, large baskets you took up. How is it you do not understand that I did not speak to you concerning bread, but to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees? Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of the bread, but the doctrine of the Pharisees and what? On the Sadducees. Mm. Let's go on. And when Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, is? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said to them, But who do you say I am? Who do you say I am? That is a question tonight. It's not for me to tell you that God is so and so. Who do you say He is? Are you getting what I'm saying? Are we talking along the lines that He is what? El Shaddai. You know, El is a singular word that comes from the plural Elohim. So El, the sovereign one. Shaddai, the many-breasted one, the nourisher of, of life, the caregiver. Now, the question is, Jesus asked, them, so who do you say I am? My question to you tonight, who do you say God is to you? It's fine what pastor says. It's fine what brother so-and-so says. It's fine what elder so-and-so says or what the cell leader says. Who do you say I am? Talking about God. Who do you say I am? In other words, did you get a revelation of the many-breasted one? Did you get a revelation of God being your provider, your bread provider? You... I'll take you to a scripture just now in Matthew chapter 6 where Jesus says, Why are you worrying? We'll, we'll deal with that just now. But the question is, who do you say I am? Who, who, who do you say? Do you just say, I'm the Lord, I'm God, uh, or, or Jesus? Who do you serve? Jesus. Who's your Lord? Jesus. Are you a Christian? Yes. Do you go to church? Yes. That is not the qualification to walk an overcoming life. The qualification to walk an overcoming life is to have a revelation of His goodness and His mercy. And his provision to you. Amen. You are worrying because you have not had a revelation yet who God is. Your hands are sweating because you have not yet had a revelation of who God is. You are perspiring. And taking Gaviscon. You know what Gaviscon is? How many of you are taking Gaviscon? Mm. 
You know what Gaviscon is, right? Do you know what it is? <laughs> oh, comets. Comets. You know comets? Why? Because you have not yet grasped and got a hold of who God is. And we are talking about the redemptive name, I am El Shaddai. Now I want you to place your hand on your forehead and say, Lord Jesus, open my eyes tonight. The eyes of my spirit that I may see you as El Shaddai. So Jesus asked a question here in Matthew chapter 16. Who, who do you say I am? Verse 15, and he said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, You are Christ. Watch the response. You are Christ. Hmm? The Son of the living God. Jesus now turns around and he says to him, he said, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Watch this, flesh and blood. In other words, human humanity has not revealed this to you. Human being has not revealed this to you. But my Father who is in heaven has now given you a revelation of the Christ, the Messiah. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you only have a revelation of who God is, that will be the end of your worrying. Amen. Your end of your nervousness. Amen. It's not that God wants our eyes on the storms of life. Because there are storms, right? And there are hardships. Come on here. And there'll be challenges because you're, re you're really dealing with a real devil that's going to put so many obstacles, it's going to make your head spin. And the only, the only thing that's going to keep your head above water is a revelation of God being out Shaddai. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? So in Micah chapter 5, chapter 4, verse 5, it says that, you know, everyone walks in the name of his God, but we will walk in the name of our God. Then I took you to Genesis chapter 17, reading from verse 1 all the way down. God reveals himself to Abram, who was first Abram, to Abraham as what? As God the Almighty. But in it, hidden, was a redemptive name called I am El Shaddai. In other words, now listen carefully. I'm saying all of that to bring you to this point is that God told Abraham from today, you will never need to worry about your provision. Amen. Amen. Now, if you can get a revelation, listen carefully, if you can get a revelation of God as your provider, God as El Shaddai, God as the many-breasted one, God as your nourisher, then that will be the end of your worry and the end of your troubles in the sense I'm talking about emotionally, psychologically, you'll be resting on God's Word. Watch. Uh, let, 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 me, let me amplify that a little bit more. Jesus' disciples and, and Jesus traveling on the boat, right? They traveling. And, they, and Jesus um, was fast asleep in the boat. And His disciples started to see a storm you know, start to brew up, and they got very worried. And then they got up the master and says to the master, Master, the storm, don't you care we're perishing? Now watch the two responses. The disciples now were worried. The boat was rocking. Everything was, you know, ready. I mean, it's just like everyday life. Because, huh? I mean, sometimes there can be a storm brewing right in front of you. And now the devil's telling you nothing's going to work for you. You're going to lose this. You're going to lose that. You're going to lose. There's vo Listen, there are many voices today. And all those voices are wanting your attention. 
It's a voice of human wisdom. It's a voice of the world. It's a voice of the news. It's a voice of the devil. It's a voice of your friends. They all are competing for your attention. But there's another voice. And that voice is called the voice of the Spirit of God. And that is also wanting your attention. Question is, what are you going to do? Which one are you going to give attention to? The voice of the world or the voice of the Spirit of God? Now the one that you give attention to will give attention to you. Are you with me? So you've got to train yourself. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. You've got to train yourself. Now watch this. You've got to train yourself even when there's clutter and noise. You've got to train yourself to dim it and, grab, and, and get your antenna up and grab the voice of the Spirit. Because that is the voice will tell you walk and you'll walk on water. It'll tell you go and you'll do it and it'll work. Uh, are you with me? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Say wonderful Jesus. So if you can just get a revelation of God as Al Shaddai, the many-breasted one. Say, I got that revelation. All right, let's go a little bit deeper. You ready? So from, from mystery, we are going to instruction, and instruction is going to take you to revelation. Revelation is going to give you wisdom and understanding of how you are to relate with God, because if you relate the correct way, you'll get the results. Say amen to that. Amen. All right. Now, I've written something down here. I want, you, I want to read it to you. Al Shaddai, the all-beautiful supplier of all of our needs. This name emphasizes the providence of God over all creation. Al Shaddai is the all-beautiful and all-sufficient one. Providence means foresight and forethought. It means divine superintendence. Oh, that is big. It means divine superintendence over all things. In other words, it's God by His divinity having supremacy. Did you get that? I like that. That's not in my notes. <laughs> That's God's divinity having what? Supremacy. All right, watch this. He says, in providence, God assumes responsibility for the eternal care of the universe. It takes in the provision for and preservation of creation in all eternity. Al Shaddai manifested himself as the all beautiful one when he planned and brought about the abundance of all things. In nature, everything produces abundantly to supply the infinite needs of all things in due season. Amen. Say due season. And the last note that I've written about Al Shaddai is like this. The all beautiful one. Amen. So there's no ugliness about God. There's no stinginess about God. There's no meanness about God. He's committed to your progress. Are you with me? No, I'm not, I'm not preaching this thing. I'm teaching it so that you can have sound understanding. The Bible says, with all thy getting, get understanding. We cannot afford to be simpletons in the kingdom of God. We've got to know godly instruction, godly direction. We must have revelation. Because after all is said and done, the only thing that's going to keep you bopping up, the only thing that's going to keep you afloat is revelation of God's Word. Amen. Say amen. amen. The devil, listen, the system of the world is a Babylonian system that is fast falling. Look at the economy today. They have experts, but it's falling. You know why? It's based on human reasoning and philosophy. And it, it minuses God. God's not in it. If only they know that if they could add 
unto God's wisdom, God's understanding, God's precepts, God's word, then that word will keep the economy Amen. where it should be. But thank God, we're operating in an economy far beyond that. Are you with me? When you, when, you, when you switch on the news, I mean, this is bad news all the time, right? I mean, have you, have you flipped through the news channel? There's nothing good. Everything is bad. Oh, we have to live above that. Say amen to that. Amen. We have to live above that. When they are speaking at work and saying, well, we're going to retrench people. And what, what do you say? Now, you can come under the circumstances or you can walk above that. Amen. You, you decide to walk above that. Say amen. amen. And you know, even, even, even at the end of the day, if after the positive proclamation and declaration of God's word, even if you are retrained, so what? Say, this is for my promotion. Amen. God's going to get me to start a business. And I'm going to get fat, and rich, and wealthy. Why? Because they don't know the Al Shaddai that you have. There's someone above the economy. There's someone above your life. Are you with me? You've got to have a revelation of that. God is Al Shaddai. My provider. Don't look for a way out. Look for a way in. Come on here. While others are saying the economy is bad and everything's well, well don't you know someone bigger. It was like the disciples 2,000 years ago. They came to him and, Master, we have just a little bit of bread and a little bit of fish. Uh, what are we going to do? Feed, feed, feed 5,000 people? How are we going to do that? Look at Jesus. Look at the wisdom from above. There's a wisdom from below that's sensual and devilish. But look at the wisdom from above. Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks. And he broke it. Then he said to the disciples, go and feed them. The Bible tells us it fed 5,000 men besides women and children. And then at the end, they took up what? 12 baskets full. That's the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Say, I'll never be broke again. Say, I refuse to suffer. Say, my eyes are open. God is my supplier. Of every one of my need. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Say devil. Doubt. Fear. Unbelief. Out of my life now. Say I'm okay. I'm doing alright. God's on my side. Al Shaddai is on my side. The Sovereign One is on my side. Al Alion is on my side. You know what that means? The Most High God. Not a God, the God. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. So you've got to have an understanding like that. And now, let me give you one more scripture quickly. You can stand, it's fine. We'll close now. Matthew chapter 6. Now, I know I didn't preach to you, but did you get something? Oh, boy, when you go home tonight, as we close the service, as you go home tonight, I want you to think about this tonight. I want you to get up in the morning knowing God is your eternal supplier. Amen. Say hallelujah. I mean, you don't have to reason. Oh, boy. Stop reasoning. Tell your neighbor, stop reasoning. If God had to blow something past your house and it will land in your yard, believe that. I mean, make a decision tonight. Listen, make a quality decision tonight. Make a quality decision tonight that you will believe everything. You will believe the color of your, you know, the cover of your Bible. You will believe the index. You will believe the concordance. You will believe everything. Amen. If you make your decision, if you make a quality decision just to believe God on those bases, He'll work for you. Okay, watch this. I don't know how. You don't have to know how. That is what 
That is what opposes God's word. You want to know how. You want to know everything. Sometimes the sums must just work out. The calculations must work out. The budget must just work out. Because you were being programmed like that. Now we need to reprogram you. Amen. This is called biblical economics. Amen. Doesn't make sense to the human mind. But uh, listen, there's some of you, you need a way out quickly. Financially, you need a way out. And I'm trying to help you. I'm telling you, I'm trying to help you. By the power of God to help you understand that there is a God that is huge. A God that is big. Now you say, but pastor, let, let me tell you my story. Everybody's got a story. If we listen to everyone's story, we'll be here to 2019. Everyone's got a story. I've got a story too. But I can tell you what. I know where to place my story. Do you understand? You place the story at the master's feet. That's where you place the story. In other words, each one of you, if I ask you, you've got a story to tell. I bless you in Jesus' name. You've got a story to tell. There it goes, there it goes, the anointing of God. You've got a story to tell. But if you place it at the master's feet, you will have a story to tell after that. It won't be called a test. It will be called a testimony. Do you understand? Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, listen, child of God, if you can only come to that place, you can control things. From far. I'm telling you, from far. You don't have to be near to control something. You can be far and control something. But when the power of God hits you, See, I'm not even near those guys at the back. If you will just know who God is to you, if you will just have a revelation of who He is to you, He is Jehovah Rapha, God my healer. When medicine fail, when doctors fail, I can turn to Him. When my bank account fails, when my place of employment fails, when my salary fails, when my contract fails, I can turn to Him. When things don't look right, I can turn to Him. When it doesn't make sense to my head, I can turn to Him. Walk in that realm, expecting miracles. God is a miraculous God. God is full of power, full of mercy, full of compassion. The days of miracles are not over. That's why if you study the book of Acts right at the end, there's no amen. God left it open. We are continuing to write that book. By what we're believing in, by how we're walking, the things we are doing. Are you understanding what I'm saying? God's a miraculous God, a miraculous God. He is El Shaddai, the many breasted one. I know some of you, your husbands have left you, and you don't have a penny left. But you, you see, the trouble with you is that you looked at your husband as the source. Your husband is not the source. God is your source. Are you with me? And some of you, your wives may have left you. But your wife was never the source. God was your source. And some of you mothers, your children may have left home. And you think, well, they've gone. Now, how am I going to manage financially? God's your source. Some of you may not have a job tonight. But you're going to walk out of here having a revelation that God is your provider. Are you with me? Hallelujah. I bless you in Jesus' name. God is your source. He 
He's the lifter of your head. He's the strengthener of your hands. God is your source. God, just God. I mean, let it be your testimony. And somebody says, take everything away from me, Lord, but just leave me with my God. And then you'll rise up again because God is your promoter. God will lift you up. You understand? Some of you, your marriages are messed up. And you can't get, you know, you can't get, I mean, just you and your wife, just two people. But you can't work, you can't live one day without argument. I mean, everything's a fight. It's a cat and a dog. It's a dog and a cat. Let God be the God of your marriage. Let God be Al Shaddai. Come on, talk to me. Let God be God of your marriage. Let God be God over your finances. Let God be God over your business. Let God be God over your body. Hallelujah. Some of you nursing all of your sickness. But one day it's high blood pressure. Another day it's sugar diabetes. Another day it's this and another day it's that. I mean the list goes on and on and on. God is Jehovah Rapha. Can heal you of any disease. He can make you whole again. He can lead you in the paths of righteousness. Do you understand? You can put the lights off. Do you understand what I said to you tonight? I want you, when you leave this place here tonight, have this firm, unwavering belief in your heart that God is a supplier. The book of James says, If you waver, let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. Put your wavering to rest. Put your doubt to rest. Today is my day. I'm going to say that tonight. Say, today is my day. I'm going to work with God. God's going to work with me. I'm going to see miracles upon miracles upon miracles. Oh, do your hand like that. Say, I want to see miracles upon miracles upon miracles upon miracles. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I release the anointing of God's presence on you right now. The Spirit of the Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I said the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For the Lord would say to you tonight by the Spirit, no more stress, no more anxiety, no more worry, no more worry, no more worry. Refuse to take thought for tomorrow. Refuse to worry, say the Spirit of the Lord. God will sustain you and God will keep you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord's falling. Watch this section. There it comes, there it comes, there it comes, there it comes. There it comes, there it comes, there it comes. Oh, there's laughter. I see you laughing in the Spirit. I see God giving you laughter in your mouth. All the pressure is leaving. Everything that's weighing you down is being released from your life tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, come on here. I want you to laugh in the Holy Ghost tonight. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is your strength. This section of my life, be filled with the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Lord Jesus. There it goes. The presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Clinton and Natisha, come here quickly to me. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The Lord is my provider. I said the Lord is my provider. I'll not fret, not be anxious, not be worried in Jesus' name. Can I have two catches here? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. I said, thank you. I said, thank you. I said, there, the Spirit of God's falling on some of you. Hallelujah. 
Don't be shy. Drink. Drink of the Holy Ghost. I said, drink of the Holy Ghost. I said, drink of the Holy Ghost. Drink of the Holy Ghost. There it comes. There it comes. There it comes. Drink of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Drink of the Holy Ghost. Drink, 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 drink of the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed Jesus. Blessed Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I saw your prayer request here. Clinton, I saw your prayer request here. So, you are very specific about everything that you've said. So, I agree with you. And I agree with you. And I bless the both of you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, the prayer of agreement is such a powerful thing. If only somebody could agree with you. The Bible says one puts a thousand to flight. Huh? And two puts ten thousand. Say hallelujah. Or tonight, listen, before you leave here tonight. I'm ready to close. I'm done. But before you leave here tonight, you need to grab something from God. In this atmosphere, grab what you need. I want you to put your hands up like this, pray in the Holy Ghost, mention those things that you want from God and say, Lord, tonight's my night and grab a hold of it. Hallelujah. Forget about the one standing next door to you. You've come here alone. You've not come here for a friend. You didn't come to church to socialize. You've come here to meet with God. So close your eyes and grab a hold of what God would give you. Say hallelujah. Father, I put my agreement with everybody as they are praying. I set my agreement with theirs and I say whatever they desire, grant it to them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Signs, wonders, miracles, Lord. Prayer requests, jobs, Lord. Employment. I prophesy over the church there will be none that is unemployed. Employment to everyone. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Oh God, I pray over our business people, our businessmen, our businesswomen, contracts from the east, the west, the north, and the south into their hands, into their bosom, Lord. I decree it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.